All right, moving on to the next example, we're going to be finding the domain and range from a set of mapping diagrams and whether or not these relations are functions or not. This is actually going to be very similar to the example that we did before with the table of values and the list of coordinates. So let's start off with part A here and to review mapping diagrams, I want to make a note that the first column on the left here always represents the x values and this column here on the right represents the y values. Now the trick when dealing with mapping diagrams is you want to remember that the number of arrows that you see is the number of coordinates that you're going to be dealing with. So notice here how in this mapping diagram there are four arrows meaning there's going to be four coordinates. You can actually write the coordinates out in a list. So starting with this one, negative 1 and 0 is one coordinate, 1 and 2 is another coordinate, 2 and 6, and then 4 and 4. And now we have a, we turn the mapping diagram into a list of coordinates and now it just becomes like the questions that we were doing in the previous video. So now we could take these points and plot them on a graph. So negative one, zero would be here. One and two would be up here. Two and six is up here. And then four and four would be right over here. So now let's find what the domain and range would be. And what's nice about mapping diagrams is that the domain and range is already listed out for you in the columns. The columns are always from lowest to highest and there are no values repeating even if they appear twice. So honestly, you can just take the columns of the X and Y values and then just copy them. So negative 1, 1, 2, and 4. And then the range is 0, 2, 4, and 6. So finding the domain and range is pretty easy when dealing with mapping diagrams because it's pretty much already given to you. Now, is this a function or not? Well, let's go to the graph and run a vertical line through it and it passes the vertical line test. There are no points where the relation is touching the vertical line twice. So it is a function. And you can tell from the mapping diagram because for every x value, there is only one y value. Let's move on to part b. So as we did in part a, number of arrows is equal to the number of coordinates. One, two, three, four. We know we're going to be dealing with four coordinates and I actually wrote them out for you here. So the 0 and 0, 1 and 0, 2 and 3, and then 3 and 3. And now taking this list of coordinates, plotting them on a graph, so we got 0, 0, 1 and 0, 2 and 3, and 3 and 3. And now let's get into finding the domain and range. So as we mentioned before, domain with a mapping diagram, really easy to find. It's just the list in the left column. So it's 0, 1, 2, and 3. We could have also got it from our list of coordinates or from our graph. And the range, let's, uh, let's switch it up. Let's try to find it from the graph now. So we have to go from the lowest y value, so from the bottom to the top. So the first y value is 0 and the next y value is 3, these, uh, these two points over here. And you only write them out once. Notice here, 0 and 3, same thing. Function, we run a vertical line through the graph and there are no points where it's hitting twice, so it passes the vertical line test, so it is a function. And again, you can see that from the mapping diagram as well. Notice that for every x value, there is only one y value. These two x values contain the same y value, which is allowed, but every x value has only one y value. And moving on to part C, 
We have this mapping diagram. Notice that there are five arrows, so we're gonna be dealing with five coordinates. I listed them out here. So zero and zero, one and one, two and one, two and two, and then three and three. And to finish off the question, let's find the domain and range and whether or not it is a function. So the domain is the list of x values. So zero, this x value of one, this x value of 2 appears twice, but we only write it once. And then the final x value of 3. So lowest to highest. We could have also looked at the first column of the mapping diagram. It's the same thing. The range list of y values. So let's look at the graph. So from bottom to top, the first y value is 0. The next y value is 1. Next one is 2, next one is 3. Notice how the y value of 1 appeared twice, but we only wrote it once. And this list here is the same as this list in the mapping diagram. Now, is this a function or not? Let's run a vertical line through the graph. Running a vertical line, it fails right there because at an x value of 2, the vertical line is touching two points, so it's not a function. And you can tell that from the list of coordinates. For an x value of 2, there are multiple y values. And more importantly, initially, you could have also saw it from the mapping diagram. For this x value of 2, there were two y values, a y value of 1 and a y value of 2. Now, a final point I want to make about mapping diagrams is notice how the graphs are all in the same sort of format. It's just a bunch of points plotted. There's no like continuous lines like a parabola or anything like that. So mapping diagrams are always going to take this kind of form of a graph. It's always just going to be discrete points because as we mentioned here, the arrows represent coordinates. So the number of arrows that you have in a mapping diagram is equal to the number of coordinates you're going to be dealing with. And whenever you plot coordinates, it's just going to be discrete points. 